Hello, everyone. Sue Anishchuk here, continuing the workbook lessons of A Course in Miracles. And uh, thank you for being here. And today we are on lesson 154. And um, today's lesson is, I am among the ministers of God. Let us today be neither arrogant nor falsely humble. We have gone beyond such foolishness. We cannot judge ourselves nor need we do so. These are but attempts to hold decision off and to delay commitment to our function. It is not our part to judge our worth, nor can we know what role is best for us. What we can do within a larger plan, we cannot see in its entirety. Our part is cast in heaven, not in hell. And what we think is weakness can be strength. What we believe to be our strength is often arrogance. Whatever your appointed role may be, it was selected by the voice for God, whose function is to speak for you as well. Seeing your strengths exactly as they are and equally aware of where they can be best applied for what? to whom and when he chooses and accepts your part for you. He does not work without your own consent, but he will not, but he is not deceived in what you are and listens only to his voice in you. It is through his ability to hear one voice and we say that again, it is through his ability to hear one voice, which is his own, that you become aware at last there is one voice in you, and that is the voice for God. And that one voice appoints your function and relays it to you, giving you the strength to understand it, do what it entails, and to succeed in everything you do that is related to it. God has joined his son in this, and thus his son, you and I, becomes his messenger of unity with him. It is this joining through the voice for God of father and of son that sets apart salvation for the world. It is this voice which speaks of laws the world does not obey which promises salvation from all sin with guilt abolished in the mind that God created sinless. That is our holy self. Now this mind becomes aware again of who God, of who created it and of his lasting union with itself. So it is itself the one reality in which its will and that of God are joined. Again, that Self, it says here, so it so is itself, that's your higher self, the one reality in which its will and that of God are joined. A messenger is not the one who writes the message he delivers, nor does the question the right of him, nor does he question the right of him who does, nor ask why he has chosen those who will receive the message that he brings. It is enough that he accept it, give it to the ones for whom it is intended and fulfill his role in its delivery. If he determines what the messages should be or what their purpose is or where they should be carried, he is failing to perform his proper part as the bringer of the word. That's the word with a capital W. There is one major difference in the role of heaven's messengers, which sets them off from those the world appoints. The messages that they deliver are intended first for them. They're intended for us first. And it is only as they can accept them for themselves, only as we can accept it for ourselves, that they become able to bring them further and to give them everywhere that they were meant to be. We, we have to accept these messages and we're still practicing and still learning to, to, you know, 
experience the voice for God, understand how that comes through us, not necessarily a voice, but how we intuitively or how we get messages or, you know, as to what to say, where to go and what to do. Like earthly messages, they did not write the messages they bear, but they become their first receivers in the true, truest sense, receiving to prepare themselves to give. An earthly messenger fulfills his role by giving all his messages away. The messengers of God perform their part by their acceptance of his messages as for themselves and show they understand the messages by giving them away. We have to understand the messages by experiencing them first ourselves in order to give them away. They choose no roles that are not given them by his authority. And so they gain by every message that they give away. We gain by giving away the messages and the experiences, you know, and sharing with others. We have to be very vulnerable as well. So would you receive the messages of God? For thus do you become his messenger. You are appointed now, and yet you wait to give the messages you've received. You hold on to them. And so you do not know that they are yours and do not recognize them. No one can receive and understand he has received until he gives. For in the giving is his own acceptance of what he received. You who are now the messenger of God, receive his messages. For that is part of your appointed role. God has not failed to offer you what you need, nor has it been left unaccepted. Yet another part of your appointed task is yet to be accomplished. He who has received for you the messages of God would have them be received by you as well. For thus do you identify with him and claim your own. It is in this joining that we undertake to recognize today. We will not seek to keep our minds apart from him who speaks to speaks for us. For it is but our voice we hear as we attend him, attend God. He alone can speak to us and for us. Joining in one voice, the getting and the giving of God's word the giving and receiving of his will. We practice giving him what he would have that we may recognize his gifts to us. He needs our voice that he may speak through us. He needs our hands to hold his messages and to carry them to those who he appoints. He needs our feet to bring us where he wills, that those who wait in misery may be at last delivered. And he needs our will united with his own, that we may be the receivers of the gifts he gives. Remember, we're not this body. This body is a means of communication. And he's saying it in here now. Now he needs our, he needs our voice. That we may speak through, he may speak to us, and he needs our hands to hold his messages and to carry them to whom he appoints. You know, we're so busy and so distracted by, by the ego world, we can't hear necessarily. Uh, you know, at the times when God is saying, you know, we ask, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? And what would you have me say and to who? And are we really listening when, in fact, he's showing us where to go, what to do, and what to say to, and to who? And this is who we are as messengers of God. In, in the previous lessons, it says we don't, we don't need to plan. But look how much planning that we take on in, in this duality, in this world. We're constantly in planning or putting through a plan. It doesn't mean that we, again, don't take care of what needs to be taken care of uh, in, in this world. But 
you know, the, these lessons are asking us to, to take five, 10, 15 minutes a day to stop and reflect on it, to get connected to, to, um, to the, the God within, to get connected with our God mind, to be silent at times during the day, just to be quiet and be still so that we can, we can be present to, to what you know, messages we are to receive and, and what it is that we are to share with our brother. You know, it may be just to bring a coffee to a friend because your friend is, is in a space of calling out for love. You may not know that till you get there to be with your friend and you hold the space of love for them in compassionate listening, coming from compassion. You know, as we develop more compassion for ourselves, we develop more compassion for our brothers and sisters. And remembering that we're either in a space of love or we're in a space of calling out for love. And again, so he needs our will united with his own that we may be the true receivers of the gifts he gives. So let us learn these less, this lesson for today. We will not recognize what we receive until we give it. You have heard this said a hundred ways, a hundred times, and yet believe your belief, yet belief is still la lacking. But this is sure. Until belief is given it, you will receive a thousand miracles and then receive a thousand more, but will not know that God himself has left no gift beyond what you already have, nor has denied the tiniest blessings to his son. What can this mean to you until you have identified with him and with his own? Our lesson for today is stated thus. I am among the ministers of God and I'm grateful that I have the means by which to recognize that I am free. The world recedes as we light up our minds and realize these holy words are true. They are the message sent to us today from our creator. Now we demonstrate how they have changed our minds about ourselves and what our function is. For as we prove, that we accept no will we do not share. And we read that again. For as we prove that we accept no will we do not share, our many gifts from our creator will spring to our sight and leap to our, into our hands and we will re recognize what we received. So I, I want to, um, to now, um, refer to again the workbook companion by Robert Perry and um, um, Alan Watson and I want to reflect now on with you their commentary on this particular lesson and they say that this lesson has two main things to say to us firstly that our function is to be a minister or a messenger of God and the specific form that function takes is determined, not by us, but by the Holy Spirit. So as a messenger, our function is to receive God's messages for ourselves. And then to give them away as directed by the Holy Spirit. By giving away the messages, we will recognize and understand the messages that we have received. So in giving, we, you know, giving and receiving are, are, are one. So the Holy Spirit knows us to the core. The Holy Spirit knows our individual strengths and weaknesses. And the Holy Spirit knows the larger plan as it says in paragraph one, line five. Uh, it said, we cannot possibly know. Holy Spirit knows how best to use 
our particular strengths. In, in line two, paragraph two, line two, it says where they can best be applied, our particular strengths can be best applied for, for what, to who, and when. Therefore, it is unwise to try to evaluate ourselves or to direct our own functioning in this world and far wiser to place ourselves in God's hands and the Holy Spirit's hands. Because of this, it says in, in again, paragraph seven, line three, I will choose no roles that are not given me by his authority. He chooses my function for, for me, tells me what it is, gives me strength to do it and to succeed in everything related to it. So it says here, a major part of the training program in the workbook is learning to hear, it's learning. We're learning to hear his voice and to submit, its, submit to its um, authority. So learning to hear his voice isn't something that occurs without any effort. Indeed, it takes effort and it takes great willingness. So we have to ask ourselves, are we willing? Are we really willing to hear the voice for God? It says, we may feel at first that we don't know how to hear his voice, but that is exactly why we need this practice. We don't know as we begin how to tell the voice of the Holy Spirit apart from our own ego's voice. This is what we're learning. We're learning to distinguish between the two. We need training, it says, that um, we need training in that discern discernment. And you know what? Again, some of it's going to be with trial and error. We're in a learning curve. But if we will follow the instructions in this book, we will learn. So the second point is really uh, an encouragement they're saying here to take up the function given us by God, which in a generic sense is to be his messenger. And, and it says in paragraph 11, he needs our voice that he may speak through us. Again, he needs our hands to hold his messages and carry them to those whom he appoints. He needs our feet to bring us where he wills, that those who wait in misery may be at last delivered. And he needs our will united with his own that we may be the true receivers of the gifts he gives. It goes on to say clearly, he directs us very specifically, choosing where we go physically, whom we speak to and what we say. Yet the main thing is that we accept this, that we accept it, that we accept this overall function of messenger for our life. If we accept that, then the specifics will follow. What I'm hearing right now is, is to, and adding to this is, take a look at a possibility of where you're resisting being the messenger. This course deals a lot with us uncovering our resistance. versus uh, the willingness, because where there's resistance, there is no willingness. So you might want to ask yourself, are you willing to be a messenger? So it says there is a three-step process clearly defined in this lesson. Number one is receive, number two is give, and number three is to recognize. 
Firstly, you recognize the message for yourself, accept it, and apply it to, to your apply it to your own life. Accept the atonement for yourself. Seeing that the appearance of guilt within yourself is an illusion and recognizing the innocence that it hides. The illusion hides the, uh, our innocence. The ego hides our innocence and our holiness. And it says, and we accept our and we accept our acceptance with God. We let go of our false and guilty self-concept. The second here is we give this message to those to whom the Holy Spirit sends us. This can be with words, it can be with actions, or simply with the attitude of mercy and acceptance we show to those we meet. And I want to add there with a compassionate heart. And we give the message we have received. We show them the mercy God has shown us. We see in them what we have begun to see in ourselves. Third, as the result of giving, we recognize the reality of what we have received. No one can receive and understand he has received until he gives. Giving away the message cements it and validates it in our own mind says in paragraph 12, we will not recognize what we receive until we give it. The second step is an essential part of this whole process. Without giving away the message, the cycle cannot be completed. My own recognition or our own recognition of salvation cannot uh, become complete. It is not enough simply to receive the messages of God. And in paragraph nine, it said, yet another part of your appointed task is yet to be accomplished. The messages must be given away, shared in order to be fully received. We must take up our function as the messenger of God, if we are to understand what we have been given. Okay. I hope that assists you in um, practicing this lesson and going forward with your uh, study and, and practice uh, of the Course in Miracles and the lessons of A Course in Miracles. Okay. Um, please share, uh, please like, please comment, and um, if you haven't already subscribed, please uh, subscribe to this channel, and those of you who have, thank you. The channel is growing. The numbers of people that are, have subscribed is growing as I continue to build this channel uh, here on YouTube, and I so appreciate all of you. Um, I look forward to being with you for the next lesson, which is lesson 155. And um, until then, wish you much love, much peace, and much joy in your life. And from my heart to yours, I extend much love to you. All right. Thank you again for being here. Bye for now.